This is Alan Farley from FX Empire. Volatility indicator is a technical tool that measures how far a security stretches away from a mean price, higher or lower. There are only two states of volatility, high and low, and the transition can elicit very important information for traders. Now we're going to look at five volatility indicators using the Apple chart because almost everyone is familiar with the Apple chart. Using the advanced function in FX Empire, the advanced charting function, we're going to pull down studies. And the first one we're going to look at is Bollinger Bands, which almost everybody on the planet has heard of uh, at this point. Bollinger Bands are the most popular volatility indicator in the financial markets around the world. And for good reason, they've developed a reputation of being eliciting very, very valuable uh, information on a security and very, very reliable buying and selling signals. Now, Bollinger Band is computed with three lines. There's a central simple moving average, usually the 20 uh, day or 20 period simple moving average, but it can be adjusted by the, by the technician. And then an upper and lower band defined by uh, standard deviation. If you take a look, you'll see it says uh, Bollinger Band 22 moving average. And that two is the standard deviation number. And it's usually set to two, but could be set to three or four. When you're dealing with a very, very volatile market, say GameStop in uh, January of 2021, three, four, and even five standard deviation may come into play. Now, a Bollinger Band uh, requires a very little, uh, very little internal interpretation because it's very visual telling you where things are at. Whenever a Bollinger or price pushes out the upside, uh, the outside of the top Bollinger Band, that's considered to be overbought. Whenever price drops below the bottom bulge of band that's considered to be oversold. Now, these small penetrations don't really mean much, but if you get an entire bar outside where the, from, the, uh, from, the, from the open of the bar to the close of the bar, and it's all outside the top bulge of band, that's a more significant overbought signal. Now, in this case, uh, with Bollinger Bands, when you get an overbought signal, you expect price to revert back to the mean, which it did perfectly in this place, in this time. So if you're long uh, a, a security and it pushes way outside in sort of a climax move, that's a warning that you need to uh, protect your profits, perhaps close your position, or at least take partial profits and put in a stop loss. Same thing, too, on the bottom side. Now, Bollinger Bands tend to constrict and expand over time. There isn't too much constriction in this particular chart. You'll see it's a little, it's narrow here and wide here. When Bolger bands get very tight, that's a situation of low volatility. And the only thing that can replace low volatility is high volatility. So that becomes very important information because the transition from a, from a low volatility to high volatility is associated with trend movement, while the transition from high volatility to low volatility is, is um, associated with uh, trading ranges. Okay, let's move on. Uh, and we have a couple of channels to look at. So those are the Bollinger Bands, which is a channeled indicator. A uh, second, we're going to take a look at Donchian channels. Donchian channels uh, have similarity to uh, Bollinger Bands, um, except they're constructed. They're not constructed using moving averages of price. They're constructed using highs and lows over a chosen period of time. So if this is the highest high over this chosen period of time, to see what the top uh, band does. Top band goes and adheres itself right to the uh, right to the top band. So if this is the lowest over a period of time, whatever your setting is, in this case, it looks like 20 bars or 20 days, then that becomes the low band. Now, Donchian channels like Bollinger Bands will start to move up or down over time. And that's very good information in relation to volatility because we have volatility by itself is non-directional. In other words, it doesn't give you a buy or sell signal. But when you have uh, a volatility band moving higher with price, well, that's bullish. That's that's a buy situation. When you have a volatility band like a dom chain channel moving lower with price, that's a sell signal. As with the uh, Bollinger Bands, there's a central mean, and we're talking about a rubber band effect, really. You see how it comes back to here? It comes back to here. Uh, not not always perfect goes through it, but then it sort of bases here. Well, that's a rubber band effect. That's what's called the mean. And it's called mean reversion. Mean reversion is the tendency for security prices to return to their mean over a period of time. Now, again, this is very sensitive to the settings placed by the technician. And uh, the shorter settings you uh, provide, the quicker you're going to get a return to the mean, theoretically, at least. 
Now let's uh, continue our discussion of channels by taking a look at Keltner channels. So we'll go ahead and uh, delete Don Chien, type in CELT, and there's Keltner channels. Now Keltner channels have a different appearance than the last two channels. Keltner channels are formed uh, by placing upper and lower bands as a multiple average true range above and below an exponential moving average. Now, in the case of uh, Bollinger Bands and uh, also with uh, Donchian channels, you're using a using simple moving average. And here we're using an exponential, exponential moving average. Average true range is how far a security stretches higher and lower over time. And then it tries to equalize that. So this uses a different formula to try to find extremes. And as you can see, it really produces different kind of information. Uh, here we have uh, Apple not reaching an upper or lower band until uh, sort of here, this one time, uh, it reaches higher. Now, uh, a lot of times, uh, Keltner channels have to be form-fitted into the type of market you're dealing with, or they, they're not that useful. So uh, you go and you have to adjust uh, either the, uh, the uh, exponential moving average setting uh, or the, uh, the period setting to find, uh, a, um, to find a set of values that uh, fits uh, so that the extremes at least touch the edges or they are pushed outside the edges. Now, interpretation is the same as the other indicators. Uh, when it goes outside, and you see sometimes it can go very, very nicely outside the channel. Uh, when it goes outside the channel, uh, this is considered to be overbought. And when it goes uh, uh, down, upside the, outside the upper, upper channel or below the lower channel, it's considered to be overbought. Now, in this case, notice how it didn't matter. And again, uh, to me, for my eye, this is a uh, this is because it doesn't really fit the form of Apple's uh, volatility very well. Now, it's uh, it's uh, once again true with many indicators, especially volatility indicators, that uh, each type of market has its own volatility signature, and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, under uh, at the end under historical volatility. So you have to sort of find what works for the instruments you're looking at and then place your extremes right outside the edges so that it just barely gets to a top band or a lower band, at least over the course of, uh, of the time that you're looking at or viewing. But again, the interpretation is the same, but Apple looks a lot more bullish on this one because it's staying in that upper channel and it's telling us that the, the, um, uh, the uptrend is still intact. And that's probably because if you go down here, yeah, it looks like there's a, this is probably working over a 50 period uh, exponential. And that's, that's, uh, at a longer term view, uh, Apple is not as range bound as it is uh, on, a, uh, on a shorter term uh, view. Okay, let's move on to uh, Ichi, I gotta pronounce this right, uh, Ichimoku clouds. Now Ichimoku clouds are, are very unique. Uh, they've been around for quite a while. A lot of traders avoid them because they're kind of intimidating. Ichimoku channels use uh, five inputs. I believe uh, uh, there's three moving averages. One is a moving average of a moving average, and then there's a fifth one that uh, I'm not really certain, but it either has to do with uh, range over time or um, a, a, a derivation of range over time. But the important thing about Ichimoku isn't, uh, isn't the, all the lines and squiggles it produces, it's the clouds. Now we have green and red clouds. Now, according to uh, the theory behind Ichimoku, when uh, a cloud is green, uh, the, uh, the security is in an uptrend, and when the cloud is red, the security is in a downtrend. Now, the relationship between price and the security determines the interpretation of the security. For example, here we have Apple pulling back to a green cloud, which is like a classic pullback to support. Because uh, the green cloud will be support when above the chat, when, when price is above and pulling back into it. And a red cloud will be resistance theoretically when uh, it's below a red cloud, when price is below a red cloud and lifting into it. We don't have a very big signal here. As you see, we got mostly just a whipsaw from that, uh, as opposed to these very persistent uh, green, uh, green boxes, uh, green clouds. And that's very typical. Now, price can also be, as you can see, take a look right here. You see that where price is above a red cloud? That's a bullish, I gotta get this right, it's a bullish divergence. Of course, it's saying downtrend, but it also, the security is acting better than it should. Uh, conversely, here we have where support should have kicked in on, the, on a green Ichi, Ichimoku cloud, but it, it, price has cut through it. So this is a bearish divergence because price is acting weaker than expected. 
And as we know, bullish and bearish divergences are very important to interpretation of many kinds of indicators, uh, including volatility indicators. So this is telling us, it's giving us a warning sign, and this is giving us an encouraging sign that you may get a buy signal. So that's the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, it requires interpretation. Let me see what the settings are here. As you can see, the settings are very complicated. It's a 926, 5226. So it's taking longer term moving averages and combining with shorter term moving averages. They're kind of similar to what uh, moving average convergence divergence does. It's comparing two sets of moving averages to see whether there's some acceleration or deceleration going on in that security. Finally, we'll move on to probably the most classic of all the uh, volatility indicators. That's called historical volatility. And all historical volatility is, it's the first, well, for starters, it's the first of all the, uh, all the uh, indicators we're looking at that's plotted in a separate pane uh, as opposed to on top of price. So that tells you something right there. Historic volatility is non-directional. Uh, in other words, when it's rising, that means volatility is increasing. When it's falling, that means volatility is decreasing. And as uh, I said right at the outset, uh, that high and low volatility is not directional information. Uh, low volatility can produce ups and downs, and high volatility can produce ups and downs. When you're going from a range bound uh, into an uptrend, you're going to get high volatility. When you're going from range bound into a downtrend, you're going to get the same high volatility with this indicator. So as you can see, here it is rising with price. Here it is sort of rising with price. But over here, uh, it's, uh, it's falling in a, in a flat market. You see how the market becomes flat and this just sort of falls. And here it's rising through a decline. So you've got to take, uh, take your, your directional hat off and use uh, historic volatility in a different manner. Now, historically, historical volatility has been applied to an entire year uh, using a 252-day setting, which you can see on this, uh, on this chart. 252 days is the average number of trading days in a year. And so as it was originally formulated, uh, it was to view back one year's time to see what kind of volatility exists in that instrument. Now, one of the other important things to, to uh, keep in mind with historical volatility is that the relative highs and lows are important. The extent of which uh, price return, excuse me, price, the historic volatility indicator drops and how high it goes. For example, if this is as high as we got in um, last September of 2000, uh, 2020, uh, when a volatility returns to that level, we need to keep an eye because that theoretically will provide resistance. Similarly, we have this little this little pullback here in um, August of 2020. And then when price came back down and we had this little breakout, then we had a little failed breakout and that preceded a short term low that actually became a, a tradable low. So high and low levels are important in interpreting the uh, historical volatility indicator.